Welcome to a brand new episode of The Merch Show. Now, this is our third attempt with Andrew Monahan from Big Brother Canada. Um, I don't know what the internet situation is like in Nova Scotia. Suffice to say, um, I don't think it's that great. I mean, I don't understand why it's taken three times to get Andrew's internet working. I'm crossing my fingers that it's going to work today. Um, it certainly didn't give us any problems with the Emmett and Jillian show. Um, so Andrew will be joining me. Now, I sort of have this like sort of strange connection to Andrew. Um, it started with AJ, and I remember, you know, I didn't know that AJ was going in the house, but certainly before he went, he was asking me a few like loaded questions, sort of like, hey, Mertz, if you were playing Big Brother, you know, what would you do? And I always kept saying to him, you got to align with the oldest player. You know, if you go back in the history of reality TV, the oldest player never seems to turn. It's the same case with sort of the military kind of person, for example, Rudy from the first Survivor. Um, and I believe there was somebody on Coach's first season of Survivor that was in the Army or something. Um, Helen Glover on Survivor Thailand was the same thing. And I even think Jerry on Big Brother was very loyal. So I kept saying to AJ, you got to align with the oldest player. And when he connected with Andrew... I'm sure that they connected on a personal level, but certainly I believe that he sort of took that theory of mine to heart. Um, so in addition to that, uh, when they were coming out down the stairs to enter the house for the first time, if you go back and rewatch that first episode of Big Brother Canada, I was sitting right up there and I gave Andrew a high five. And it's just very cyclical, you know, like the only guy that I high five is the one that my best friend connected with in the house. So I obviously was pulling for Andrew uh, almost as soon as AJ uh, was evicted. Let's bring Andrew on. We're going to talk to him a little bit about Big Brother Canada. We're going to talk to him about why the other contestants seem so anti gemmet and certainly we're going to talk a lot about Big Brother 15. Let's bring him on. Hang on one sec. All right, here he comes. Andrew, hey, welcome to the Merch Show. All right, Hi, so Travis. before I before I get into it, Andrew, we got to take a photo for the website. So you just got to hold the merch pose for two seconds. Perfect. All right, Andrew, let's get right into it. Uh, how did you get on the show? Uh, I auditioned. <laughs> Simple as that. So you went you went to an open call. Went to an open call. I said, you know what I'm at. You know I'm not allowed to talk about the audition process or the casting. Oh, no, not at all. I just wanted to know if you sent in – all I wanted to know is if no. you sent in a tape or if you went yeah. to an open call. I didn't I didn't send in a tape. It was kind of a – I've been thinking about doing it for a while, and then uh, Pete and Tracy and my brother and my sister-in-law were like, you totally got to go for it. So I just woke up at like 6 a.m. on the Sunday and went down to the Metro Center, which is here in Halifax where they had it, and uh, waited in line and walked in, and uh, yeah, next thing you know, I'm on the show. Um, did they have one of those? I know that for the Toronto one, they had Mike Boogie here. Was Hayden or anybody at the Nova Scotia one? Uh, I missed that. Oh, sorry. I just said uh, they had Mike Boogie here at the auditions in Toronto. Did they have a oh, former yeah. Big Brother player at the Nova at the Nova Scotia ones? Uh, no, not that I saw. Uh, see the East Coast. The East Coast always gets screwed on the celebrities, huh? I, th I think so. I don't know why they didn't. There was talk that, you know, Hayden would be there or something, but he, obviously he was out in Vancouver and Boogie was in uh, Toronto. Yeah, we didn't get anybody. And if, if they were there, they must have been there before I was there. I didn't see anybody. They just got three Now, did ones. Peter... <laughs> That's good. Uh, did Peter Tracy want to try out, or was it just you? No, Pete and Tracy weren't going to try out. I mean, they're, they're the big fans of the, of the show, but, you know, Pete and Tracy have two-year-old girls, and... Uh, they don't have the time uh, to be able to do that. They've got to take care of the girls, and uh, Pete's got to go to work. So, and also, I think they both felt that I had personality for it. As much as they're big fans, you also got to have a little something that maybe that open top personality that they thought that I had, and also the fact that I worked in, in the bar business for so many years, and I can talk to basically anybody and befriend many different types of people. So they were like, Tracy always said, she's like, man, you're perfect for this show. You got to go for it. So I said, shag it. I'll, I'll give it a whirl, and what do you know? Next, thing, you know, you kind of go in there going. Man, wouldn't it be crazy if I made it, but I have no chance. Look at all these yahoos floating around here. I got no chance, and you see the show, and then next yeah. thing you know, you're on it. So it's it's quite mind-blowing. It's kind of surreal. Absolutely. Um, did it surprise you when you went into the house that you were one of the older players? Because I feel like certainly 
there's been this, um, it, it, it's really strange, like for somebody in their like mid to late thirties to be the oldest player on this show, that's a relatively new phenomenon. So were you expecting yeah. that? Well, you know, Mertz, it was one of, it was a complex that I had going in. I was like, I was really nervous about it. I was thinking, man, I, I mean, I'm 38. I mean, I feel like I'm 25 and maybe I act like I'm 14, yeah. but, uh, you know, I just had this feeling I was like, especially with the you know, big brother 14 had uh, like Joe was 43 and Boogie's 42, something like that. So I was like, you know, they really don't, don't have this really older type fifties or sixties. So I was nervous about it. And then when I got in there, I was looking around, I was going, it's definitely me. And so my, my worst fear kind of was, was realized. And I think I sort of harped on that a bit in the beginning and I wish I could have went back and, and not done that, but Hey, you can't take back what the, what's already happened, but uh, you can see it happening now with in big brother 15, you got this Helen Kim, who's, She's a year younger than me. She's 37, and she's the oldest. So, and I mean, the guys. There's yeah. no guy who's mm -hmm. over. There's no guy who's over 30. I think uh, what's his name, Howard. I think is 29. Going to be 30 during the show, I think. And that's it. So I guess they're just going with the, you know, to have the younger crowd now. It's maybe, you know, like you said, you got examples of these people who are older, like much older, who stick around a lot longer because they are loyal. But I think maybe they don't bring a lot to the story. Maybe you know, not that sex appeal yeah. or something like that. So maybe they're saying, you know, you got a guy who's 60 years old. Do you want to see him run around in a Speedo? I don't think so. Not to say you want to see somebody who's 38 run around in a Speedo either, but right. I don't know. Who knows? I You're mean, young. 38. Well, I, I, yeah, but the thing is, I mean, I, I certainly feel like the older players, I feel like, are a lot more compelling to watch. Because of that life experience, they certainly play in a certain way. Like, I remember on the first Survivor, the reason reality TV is even so popular as it is right now yeah. is because of guys like Richard Hatch, guys like Rudy, you know? Like, yeah, exactly. I think that these younger people, they basically prance around in their bathing suits, but they don't really mm -hmm. play a lot of game. I agree. I would absolutely agree. You know, they don't really have a lot of stuff. They don't have any anything to, to, to draw on, no life experience. So, you know, anything is like... You know, real life experience. I mean, if you're 22 years old, what's the, you know, what you got? Four years of actual real life experience. That is, I wouldn't even count that real life experience. Just partying with your friends. It's just a whole different thing. Right. They haven't had anything, anything bad happen in their lives or anything. Not to say that younger people can't have a, a great perspective on life or anything like that, but they just don't have all that experience to draw upon for. And, and like I say, in, in something like Big Brother, when you're just, all you're doing is hanging around all the time and just all you can do is talk. Then you get these people who are 21 years old. Believe me, I don't want to hear the same story about some keg party. It's going to, you know what I mean? It's, it's a nightmare. Yeah. These people, they, they want to talk about themselves all, enough as it is. So when, at, at least if they had something interesting to say, that would be make it a little bit uh, better. That's why you, you know, I would have a good conversation with somebody like, like an AJ. You know, we had great conversations about uh, sports and uh, about life in general because you know, there's, there's not that much of a gap between us, maybe five years, four, five years. Anyway, so we, we had a lot in common, so that really worked well for us. Um, would you describe yourself as the cantankerous, like, grumpy old man in the house? Because certainly I feel like that's how you came off at times. Uh, I, I think I definitely, uh, you know, didn't have as much patience as I needed at times. Uh, I mean, obviously I was the mm -hmm. oldest person, and there were certain things that just absolutely drove me bananas. I didn't, I, you know, I barely let it out, but then a few times you just couldn't hold it anymore it just sort of gets to that breaking point and you just explode and, you know it might just be like someone said that i was complaining you know what i mean because i am you can ask pete i'm a complainer yeah. in general and i'm like oh jesus this sucks blah oh, this again oh, you know it's kind of how i am very self-deprecating as well so it's always about the bad thing yeah. about myself which some people like some people don't uh, obviously very sarcastic but yeah sometimes i would be losing it for sure i mean you know when the, you know, with at Tala, at Gary, at every, all the, at everybody, you know what I mean? At some point I was like, oh God, I'm sure I had something bad to say about everybody, even about myself. I'm sure most, even more than everybody else. So maybe not cantankerous um, might not be the word that I would say. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the thing that, the thing that sort of stood out to me was the fact that like you guys, like, and when I say you guys, I mean you and AJ just seemed content at sort of being in the background. Um, mm -hmm. I felt like you guys were with the guys and it, seemed to me like you didn't know that you were just basically parachutes for them. Like, The Shield didn't really give a crap about you guys. Emmett yeah. and Tom didn't really give a crap about you guys. Was that by design? And why didn't you sort of make an effort to be the leaders, maybe pick up the misfits, you know, pick up Gary, pick up Topaz, yeah. and make a move? Or was it your strategy to lay back and let the other guys take the heat? I think it was a bit of a, you know, a bit of a strategy. You know, I, I would have, trust me, you know, Pete gave me a bunch of advice going to the house and he said, if anybody asks you for an alliance, you take it immediately. Um, nobody asked me. You know what I mean? I, I, I let it dangle out there with the likes of, 
Tom and Emmett on, on basically the, the very first morning that we were there. I was like, hey, maybe we could be in an alliance and they just didn't bite. Or they maybe just thought, nah, let's not do it. Or maybe it just wasn't um, something better came along, I guess. So, um, you know, you just kind of tried. You sort of threw up, you know, put a bit of bait out there. If nobody took a bite, then you just sort of just hoped that nobody would sort of see you as, as a threat. And it took him a while to figure out that I was a threat. But Tom eventually did and wanted to get me out. I don't know if that was because of Eliza or what, but... He definitely wanted to get me out and Emmett saved me in on that that week four uh, when it, when Anil unfortunately went home. So, um, you know, was it a strategy? I think it's just something that happens. I mean, you go in there with a strategy, you might not be able to follow through, but you just kind of you take what you get. You know what I mean? If something happens, then you go yeah. with it. So if if I, I was just trying to be myself, be friendly, be funny, be patient and listen, uh, and not stick out so much, you know, I still want to have a fun a fun time. You know, participate in you know any kind of athletic. Uh, things that we were doing, having to catch or whatever the case might be. Um, and then just see what happens after that. And, you know, luckily I wasn't, I didn't have a target until later on. I was, I was lucky there were much bigger targets for people or weaker people that they wanted to get out initially. And I, and AJ did coast along until that uh, unfortunate uh, incident of eviction for AJ. But uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I think maybe that might've been his downfall as well because he was, know that mm -hmm. uh topa is really i think Mickey gary that shield were hoping to keep wanted to keep me even though they all say it's the biggest baddest move they knew that of aj and myself i'm the only one that potentially could win and then to make a big move which was to get gary out or if they wanted to get emmett out but i mean obviously i wasn't going to get emmett out if i'm in an alliance with him that they maybe didn't know or knew and didn't want to believe so unfortunately for aj you know, as much as they should have kept him, that's the biggest move, that, the dumbest mistake, well, the first one, was not getting rid of me. And I thank them for that. But obviously for AJ, and it was because he couldn't get anybody else out, I think is what they thought. I, I, I actually do want to talk about that shield move because uh, I, I think it's pretty apparent that I hated the shield. I thought that they were yeah. extremely overrated. I thought that they, oh, yeah. you know, people say that they talked a good game and didn't do anything. I don't even think they talked a good game. I just think they came off as douchebags the entire show. And I've said that to them on their face. Um, yeah. But the thing that really bothers me the most about the shield is Alex's justification for why they got rid of AJ over you. Yeah. And he was like, well, the reason that I wanted to keep Andrew in is because I knew that Andrew still had a big move in the game to make. And I just thought that was the most ludicrous explanation mm -hmm. I've ever heard. Um, what did you feel about that? Like, looking back... Um, do you feel like that's the reason that the Shield didn't win? Because ultimately, I, I genuinely think it comes down to that move. Because getting yeah. rid of AJ, that's what kept the Beast Coast together, yeah, um, who ended up riding to the five. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if they would have, they should have got rid of me because they, I was the bigger threat. I mean, let's face it, I was the bigger threat than AJ. He's my buddy, but he definitely could have stayed. I don't know what what would have happened. Obviously, I was aligned with Emmett and Jillian in the, in the East Coast Alliance, and then. If I would have gone, then you've got AJ who will obviously slide over with Alec and Peter for sure, and then be part of either yep. the third part, the third part of the of the shield, or maybe all you know. Then it's then you've got who you've got the five of them. So who you know? So you got Gary, mm -hmm. you've got Topaz, you've got Alec, Peter, you've got AJ and and Tala who all gang up on him and Julian. Except for the one thing is, is that who won the next HOH then? Right. Right. Was it Emmett and Jillian? Because then, guess what? They don't have a move to make because those guys have all the power. Totally. But, they, totally. you know what I mean? Totally. They, should, they should have got rid of me because then, you know, then I think AJ would have been more loyal to, to Alec and to Peter because they, he never had anything with, with He never had anything with Emmett and Jillian. They didn't really, I don't think, like him or care. You know, not like isn't the word, but they were like, oh, we're not going to align with this guy because he can't you know, even hurt him. Win anything. Off. Take a pop shot at him during the veto, right? Where he's like, "Look, obviously you're you're a big physical threat. Obviously, Emmett's attempt at sarcasm, which is funny, but but because they know that he can't do, it, you know, he's not going to win a physical competition. So I mean, you know, he could win a he could win an HOH like anybody can win any competition, but not a physical competition. So they just didn't care for him. Obviously, I mean, they would align with anybody if it's going to help you with your game. But obviously, they were happy that they, they I knew they were going to vote for me. It was just a matter of Peter and Alec, and they made the mistake. Obviously, keep him. So thank you very much. The shield. <laughs> um, do you feel like if you had gone in that instant eviction over AJ, yeah. um, do you feel like he would have been the one who would have like ridden it out to the four? Uh, I, I really, you know what, I have no idea because I, I obviously won the next HOH, didn't I? So it all depends on, right. you know, we can all say this what Your if, I mean, what if, so, um, I mean, let, let's look at it. So I go home, then who wins the 
Alex HOH, I think maybe it would have been Tala. Then AJ would have been safe because she was second to me in that competition, let's just say. Um, then who does Tala get rid of? Would she have gone like what she said? She was going to get rid of Emmett and Jillian? I don't know. It's easy to say things when you don't win. So I don't really know. It, it all depends. And then what you know? What, what move is Alec and Peter going to make? Who wins? Does Gary not like AJ like it was actually the way it was on the show? You know, I mean, they didn't get along on the show. Obviously, when you get into the into the, um, into the jury house, it's a whole it's a totally different experience, right? You're like, hey, it's, yeah. it's it's over. Who cares? Let's be friends. You know what I mean? But when you're in the house, I mean, you saw in that first lumberjack in jail with AJ and, and Gary. They were they were fighting each other. And AJ, believe me. I, like AJ we always talked about getting Gary out when we were when we were in there for sure. So. That's that's what makes that's literally what makes no sense to me and uh, yeah. about their relationship now and about AJ voting for him. You know, like I mean, I watching the feeds, I I genuinely don't understand that. So that I think this is a good point to start talking about that because I feel like you're the only one, um, you know, for for guys like Peter and Alec and even AJ, who's my friend, for guys that are like big fans of the show. I legitimately don't understand how they can vote for somebody who was voted out, comes back in, spent a week in the jury. It was completely unfair. So why do you think that they don't see that? Like, I, I just don't understand the justification for their vote. Because for me, I would have voted for anyone over Gary because he was already evicted. It's only one word, Mertz. Bitter. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's 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 all I can it can come down to. You know what I mean? Like, for me, I was I was there to win the game. You know what I mean? You're there to play. You want to win Big Brother. When you don't, then, yeah, you've got a chance to vote, which is great. And you've got an opportunity to make your own decision. But you should make it based on what you believe in. And for me, it's about who played the best game. And like Emmett has said, and, and I do agree, you know, it's you get one life in Big Brother. And, you know, you, when you get evicted, uh, that's it. You don't have another chance. You go to vote. You get a chance to, to, to pick a winner or, you know, the person you hope wins. But... To vote for somebody just be, just because you were friends with them in in the house is what AJ is saying is ridiculous, especially as somebody who's just such a big a fan as he is. Then he just sounds like a complete dumbass, which I think you might agree with. Saying, "Hey, I, you know, I really liked Gary. I got to know him in the in the, in the jury house." Is like, well, that's a great reason to vote. But that has nothing. To, it has nothing to do with the game, exactly. though. It has, it's just because you hung out with him for a week. Which technically, if this went the way that it should have, Gary would have never been in that jury house. So basically, yeah. you're saying that you're voting for Gary. Because he was with you when he technically he wasn't even there. So who would you have voted for if you didn't spend a week, you know, in yeah, the jury house? Exactly. Uh, I, I just. I, I, he I, was co- Listen I, to me. You know, Mercy was coerced by by the Shield. Obviously, Alec and Peter were very, very bitter with with Jillian and Emmett that they didn't take them. Is the big thing, and especially with with Jillian, she's the one that ultimately got both of them. But they were exactly guilty. If guilty is even a word that you want to use, it's it, they did what they wanted to do. They made moves that you had to make to, to get bigger threats out. And it ultimately worked in, in Jillian's because she won, even though it is a mistake. But I think that's karma coming back to other people in the ass. Um, you know, if she, if, she, if she was, you know, just imagine if all the moves that Jillian made, just imagine it's Peter who does all that stuff, wins all those competitions, does all the things that she did, and, and then has Peter's character in the DR. Right, and is laughing, say, ha, 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 what a bunch of idiots, blah, 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 you know, doing his hand thing, doing his best Dan Giesling impersonation. And everybody then thinks he's the greatest player of all time. But because it's Jillian, and she's a woman, and she's not in there saying, hey, I, I lied again, and now my plan is coming, you know what I mean? Totally. And she's just, then what, she's totally. a liar. I love it, he, you know, here's Peter going, she's a liar. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I think I did a few, you know, at, I always said in the house, Marks, I said, well, anybody, anybody who says they're, yeah. they're, they're not going to tell a lie, that's their first lie right there. I mean, you got to lie. Well, it's, but you do bring up, you do bring up a good point. You know, like I feel, because I just talked to AJ about this yesterday. I've talked to Peter and Alec about it ad nauseum. And like their two main points are number one, Jillian didn't take ownership of her lies, which they didn't like, like the whole thing with Topaz. She didn't own it. And the second thing is that they said that like the reason that they feel Gary is a better player is because Gary had a social game. He didn't Mm -hmm. rely on winning competition. So how do you address that? Because... I do, I do see a little bit of their point. You know, I'm not saying that I agree with them, but certainly yeah. I can say that, like, did Gary play a better social game? I think he did. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the fact that, like, he stayed, you know, the fact that he stayed after being after coming back in when he should have been yeah. the first one to go after he came back in, yeah. I do feel like oh. that's an argument. So how do you respond to that? Well, okay, let's let's talk about this um, with Gary. For one thing, you don't you, you don't normally get voted back in. Right, that's the first thing. Obviously, mm-hmm. he, he had, yeah, I feel like he had a better game than than Jillian, 
uh, socially, but obviously he didn't because he went before her. Uh, he obviously got on some people's nerves and was also a big threat, so we got him out. He was the second one in the jury house. Um, what was this? What was the second part that you were asking about? About um, uh, well, they, yeah, they were just saying that. Um, yeah, okay, and and some people in the chat room are saying that. Stu yeah, and, and competitions yeah. versus yeah. playing a social game. Well, let me just first address the fact that, you know, Gary comes back and it's like, oh, he should have went home first. Well, he won the veto. You know, he won that, you know, that how bad do you want a veto that, you know, it was just a it was just a reflex competition, wasn't it? How quickly you could hit the button. So we couldn't get him out then. Then, mm -hmm. then I was gone. I, I was gone anyway. So that's I, I got nothing to do with that. I think Emmett should have got rid of him over Tala. That's another bad mistake by Emmett, but we can talk about that later. Um, and far as competitions goes, yeah. you know, I, I understand what people are talking about. You know, there's obviously Will, you know, Dr. Will didn't win a single thing. That was his whole strategy. Bearing in mind, that was that was season two, so that was before there was a veto and way earlier on before anybody knew how this game even worked. Um, totally. You know, so that's way in the past, uh, but still, he did it. Uh, and then you've got Dan, obviously, in season 14, where he didn't win anything. Now... A little bit of a different circumstance there as well, where he comes in four weeks safety as a coach, and then it's built up this trust with the Danielle character and the ultimate respect of a super fan like Ian, who wants to work with him. You know, they super tr they trust him. Mm. Um, oh, here we go. All right, look at this. I'm I'm digging yeah, I'm digging this because I haven't looked at it that way before. I like yeah. this. I like this Dan so, opinion. So, so you know, okay, yeah, he didn't win anything, but and he got everybody. I mean, you know, look at the people who he's in there with. I mean, you know, he swears on a Bible to Frank. You know, and Frank trusts him. And then he gets out, all that type of stuff. So I, that's a different scenario. Now, take a look at Peter and Alex. You know, Alex did win a competition. Uh, Peter, you know, won a couple competitions. Uh, Peter won a couple of vetoes as well. But then look, I mean, Peter, you know, he wins these vetoes. And even though he says, you, you know, you don't need to win competitions, he wins co wins competitions and makes the biggest mistakes. Like think about the second veto he won. He should have used that on Topaz, and then I would have been gone. Yeah. <laughs> and and I mean you know what and, and and with regard to that with regard to that Andrew I feel like him not using that on on Topaz do you feel like that was the biggest you know it doesn't isn't that sort of like an argument for why Emmett and that. Jillian should win is the fact that like you know he this guy is supposedly the biggest strategist on Big Brother yeah. Canada and yet when he yeah. finally has the chance to make one of the biggest moves in reality. Yeah. Emmett and Jillian are so good that they convince him not to use it. Isn't that that one thing? Isn't that an argument for why you should I, vote for them? I, I agree completely. I mean, you know, the fact that, you know, he and, you know, I, I watched that. I haven't watched them all yet, Mertz, but I've, I've seen the one where Peter leaves and I'm just in the week now where I'm about to leave. And it's true. Peter is enamored with, with Emmett. It's like he is just in awe. Standing back saying that I'm lucky and, you know, at is undeserving and Jillian is a liar and Emmett has my ultimate respect, you know, because Emmett, you know, and actually if, I think Emmett played the best game. He really did. Yeah, For sure. Exact, you know, For sure. Absolutely. He should have won, but he, he didn't play the best game because he made a couple of mistakes at the end. Keeping, he got, getting rid of me was, a, was the perfect move to do, but getting rid of, of Tal over Gary was his, his undoing. Um, and Peter just absolutely loved Emmett. And I think it crushed him when, you know, they decided to keep me or, or Tala over him. Uh, and Alec as well just kept on talking about how day three, um, day three, they had an alliance with the, with the Shield and with Quantro. But I mean, as soon as Tom left, I think Emmett was done with that whole thing. Anyway, he just still had everybody just at his beck and call. You know what I mean? He just would put that, that magic Blois hand on your shoulder and look you in the eye. And it was like you were mesmerized. You would just be like, Emmett, I will do what you say. <laughs> <laughs> you totally, know what I mean? So totally, totally. He, played, he played the best game. He just, he ended up the loser, unfortunately. Uh, I mean, he made a top three. He's got the most fans and he played the best game, but unfortunately he didn't win anything for that. But unfortunately for Peter. Well, I mean, well, okay. Now, now, now you bring, you bring up a good point there too, in the sense that like, um, you know, the choice to take Gary instead of Tala, uh, isn't that an argument for why Gary played a good game? The fact that like he basically made Emmett yeah. think that taking, you know, so I do oh, yeah. see, I do see an argument oh, hey, for I'm Gary, not, but the problem is that I just don't think you should even hear that argument because yeah. he shouldn't have been I voted agree. back in. This is my point. I agree. You know, here's the thing with me, Mertz, is that I'm, I'm not arguing the fact that, you know, Gary did play a good game when he came back and he obviously played a, uh, he played um, the audience and obviously was the favorite, the star of the show. We're, you know, we talked about it and that, hey, this is going to be Gary's season. It's true. Uh, everybody voted to get him back in. So he won that competition. As Alec like to say, as much as that's not a competition, we don't make the rules about the twists and that kind of stuff. So I don't, I don't fault him right. for that, and I don't say he didn't play a good game. I just say, 
uh, somebody who's been already evicted is undeserving of the chance to win. If it, you know, if it's a twist, that's fine. But anybody, all those people who worked so hard to get there, all the 15 of us, you know, you realize that there's only one check and one winner. And when you get evicted, then you expect that that's the end of the road for you. And when somebody reopens that door that was been locked and you get to walk back through and have another chance to win, you know, you're excited, but all the other people are, are not going to be happy and are not going to respect that. It's nothing against the person. It's nothing against Gary. I wouldn't, you know, if AJ came back through those doors, believe me, hey, I would have been happier because it was AJ, but I'd still be pissed that it was somebody come back. So it was nothing against totally, Gary and totally. the way that he played. It's just the fact that he was already out. And if you're, you, you play this game to get people out, and when they're out, then you think they're dead, they're not going to be resurrected. That's all I can say. I totally agree. Um, yeah. Now, now somebody in the somebody in the chat room this way down is asking um, why I'm saying what I'm saying because people get voted in all the time. I totally agree yeah. this way down. However, do. they so are not in the crazy. jury house. Exactly. They're not. Yeah. They're not hanging out in the jury house yeah. exactly. talking to the same people that are going to be voting for them yeah. to win. I think that's the honestly. I'll, I'll call a spade a spade. Yeah. In my opinion, some of these yeah. twists were the worst that I've ever seen in reality history. One, getting somebody to hang out in the jury house and come back, you know, like, that's completely unfair. Secondly, I thought that, like, in the instant eviction, airing Topaz's deliberations was completely, completely unfair as well. It completely outed her game to not just one player, but to every player in the house. Yeah. Hey, man, you know what? I can't, I can't control the twists. I just I just hope that they don't affect me yeah. in a really bad way. Obviously, one helped me, one hurt me. Um, that's, mm -hmm. you know, I just, I just, all you can do is just wait and see what comes in that house or what leaves and deal with that that's that everything else is out of my control so uh you know i, I wish you know obviously and i, I do I, and that's a good point andrew you know i thought it was no it is a good point it is a good point yeah mm -hmm. what, what's a good point because the thing is you know what you're getting you know what you're yeah. getting when you go on big brother you know that yeah. they're going to do stuff like this so you're right i mean we're yeah. arguing about semantics because the fairness totally of it true. doesn't matter like they go on the record and say we'll do whatever we want yeah. you know you know that going in yeah, and it's funny because if a lot of people do say that, it's like, hey, you know, it's not fair. It's like, hey, you know, it, 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 life is not fair. We're on it. We're on a TV show, and we know we, they they have a, a a term or whatever their slogan is: expect the unexpected. So you just go with it, man. You know, I mean, we didn't know that there were 15 people going in. You got mindless speculation that is just ongoing on a daily basis. So you're just trying to to to, to maintain your san your sanity and to to make it out alive. Really, I wanted to self evict every day. I was mostly joking, but also sometimes I really I meant it because you were losing it just because of the people that you're in there with, and being cut off from the outside world. You know that element of it is, and you don't know what's the, it's the unknown that sometimes can really mess with your brain. So you just you just roll with the punches. You let the water roll off a duck's back and insert as many stupid sports cliches as you can in here because you can't control it. Um. I think this is a. I, I want to get into a gem it then and now. Uh, and before yeah. I do that, I just want to remind everybody to please hit the Facebook share. You can do that at the top of your window. We are here with Andrew Monahan from Big Brother Canada. You can also tweet that we are here, and you can join us at themerchshow.com. Um, Andrew, I want to talk a little bit about gem it then and now, in the sense that, like, certainly. I felt like then, like in the house, they were pretty popular. You know, the Shield liked them, you liked yep. them. Even AJ, when he was evicted, was like, Jillian's the best player. Um, but now there seems to certainly be a very big anti gemmet sentiment among all the all the house guests that I've talked to, literally all of them, yep. have said, oh, we don't like Jemmet. They haven't reached out to us, um, you know, and they're not following us on Twitter. I hear that all the time from all these people in Toronto. Um, why do you think that is? You know, like usually you don't like somebody in the house and you're fine with them after. In this case, I almost feel like it's the opposite. You know, I, th I think there's the big difference about, you know, if, you know, we've got that that commonality of, of all being Big Brother Canada. I was guess in the first ever and all that stuff. And, you know, we'll always have that connection. But the other thing is you, you can't forget is that we all come from our own individual places and we are who we are. In that house, obviously, we had our personalities and that's why we were chosen to be characters or villains or heroes or whatever the case might be. But once the game, once it's over, then we go back to our normal lives. And, you know, you got that, that large core of people in Toronto, which is understandable that they would all hang out and things like that. And, hey, I follow it. For the record, I follow everybody i even follow mertz here on twitter uh, and don't forget Drew, to follow uh, me at, at drew manji 74 obviously um but yes, i think yes, the thing we'll is, that up at the end don't yes worry. that's fine but i think the big thing is that it's over the show is over you know what i mean so so jen and emmett are you know and a lot of people are like they are that's the question i was going are they still together yeah they're they're still together they're very happy they're enjoying their lives and they're they're always on the go uh emmett is a is a very i think emmett's got the entrepreneurial spirit inside of him and 
and Jillian is a very happy-go-lucky person. And they're just trying to enjoy their lives. The fact that she's she's one uh, is amazing, and the fact that you know he's he's got some stuff on the go that he wants to get happening with his corn maze and a few other things. So they're just separating themselves, really. You know, we've done a few uh, events together. We did a couple of parades, but now they're just like, hey, let's just enjoy ourselves. Let's enjoy each other's company. Let's just do our thing. And to them, it's not a big deal to be involved in the whole Big Brother thing. Um, you know what I mean? Like they haven't watched the show yet. And I think to them, it's they've been there and done that. And you know what I mean? I, I still am in contact with them. Um, I don't can't speak for them as to why they're not following these guys or why they're not in contact and why everybody else. I think maybe they're just, you know, a few of the people are bitter that they got them out. I know Liza and them are having a bit of a thing, but... I, I can't really speak to it because I'm not part of it. Uh, I, I think I get along pretty well, well with everybody. See, um, I don't know. I mean, well, the argument the argument that I hear here is that, you know, oh, we it's not it's not how they played the game. You know, they're just bad people. But certainly, I don't I don't see that at all. You know, I mean, do you feel like they is there a responsibility for the cast to get along? Is there a responsibility no. for the cast to all follow each other, in your no, opinion? absolutely not. No, absolutely not. I mean... You know, there's, you have no responsibility to get a Twitter account if you don't want to. So you do whatever the hell you want. And, um, you know, everybody everybody can do what they want. These guys are, you know, if they got along with the people on the show, that's, that's great. But they were playing the Big Brother game. You know what I mean? And that's over now. And I, I don't know what to say for, for those guys. You know, are they why are they not following them or whatever? There's there's no responsibility. You know, it's 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 done. They've done their 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 duty to the Big Brother uh, role that they were playing. Yep. Now it's back to, to life as usual. I mean, me, I'm back to work. Uh, I don't think many of these people are working, but I got to go back to work. And also, you know, like I don't, I don't talk to Tom. I don't talk to Gary. Uh, I don't talk to Suzette. You know, I mean, just a, maybe the odd t tweet for most people. The only people I really talk to is Emma and Jillian. Uh, you know, Tala on Twitter. Uh, AJ. You know, the odd text and tweet. Uh, Alec, Peter. You know, a little bit of text and tweet. Even Liza, you know, has a couple of texts and a few tweets. I guess it's most, you know, but then some of the, you know, uh, you know, Danielle, you know, I've got to follow everybody else, cat, everybody else on on Twitter, but you know so there's, I mean? there's, there's no, there's no like, uh, there's nothing. Well, there's no, so there's no, uh, there's no meaning behind uh, or or any relevance to the theory that Emmett and Jillian only like people from the East Coast. I, I have no idea. I can't speak about who they like or who they don't like. You know <laughs> no, what I mean? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, I'm kidding. I, I would say they probably, yeah, it's probably, there's probably a few people they don't like. I mean, we all have a few people we don't like. I'm sure there's a couple in them that even don't <laughs> like me. All right, all right. I want to... I want to, I want to, I want to get off this like uh, Emmett and Jillian topic. It's just because I'm personally fascinated. Let's talk a little bit about you and Liza. You know, like you were the one who got rid of Liza, and as I know personally, she's definitely the most opinionated. So, what's your relationship with Liza like right now? It's, uh, you know, I mean, you know, we follow each other on Twitter. It'll be odd tweet back and forth. Uh, we, she's got my number. I got hers. Just to be odd text. It's, a, it's an okay relationship. You know, it's funny how, you know, when you watch the show, Liza and I were, were very close in the beginning. And um, they never showed that at all. They didn't show it at all. Like her and I even said things like initially, I was like, hey, you're the only person I trust in the very beginning because she was the oldest girl besides Suzette. And I actually had this this connection, and she was she told me all these lies about about um, Emmett trying to get me to go against him, and not against Tom. So she was obviously you know they showed them her with with Tom and with Peter, but they never ever showed her and I. You know they showed like maybe one time we were laying in the hammock together having a chat, but her and I would have these just chats about normal life. You know what I mean? And they never yeah. showed they, it was never shown. So I'm I'm happy not to have been involved in the uh, you know in the in the weird three way that they had going on in and out of the house. I don't know, <laughs> but you know we, we did have a good relationship early on. We were like looking out for each other. At least that's what I thought. But then you know she maybe said something different. But I, I believe that she lied to me. Um, she lied to a lot of people, and that's what got her out. So I, I went with the with the majority at that point. You know what was I, I wasn't gonna. You know a lot of people say. Oh man, I wouldn't have done that. I'm always like, would you tell me what I should have done? What should like Mertz? Let's ask you what, what should I have done during the the in, not the incident, but the, the double eviction with with Liza. And I don't think I. I mean, I I don't think I, I don't think I would have done anything. I don't think I would have done anything differently than what yeah. you did. I genuinely yeah. don't. I think yeah. like I think your best move certainly was saving the East Coast Alliance until yeah. late in the game. I feel like yeah. if you had done that early. Yeah. That would have really hurt you. So I think yeah. that the best move you made was certainly waiting until, you know, final six, final five yeah. to, to put that together. And, and, you know, I mean, I was, that, that's the funny thing then later on when, 
or when I got Gary out, you know what I mean? And, and, and I don't, I'm going to pull it back. I didn't get anybody out. That's the thing that people, you know, you always say, oh, I got him out. I didn't get anybody out. I won HOH and nominated two people. And the five people voted Gary out over Topaz, right? Um, mm-hmm. and, I, and I always get people say, oh, man, or or in the end when I get evicted, people are like, oh, man, you shouldn't have done that. I'm like, you t- what could I have done differently? You know, I'm in alliance with yeah. them and Jillian. You know what I mean? I have this trust with, with Alec. I actually did. Um, Topaz has just nominated me, and Gary's the only one that voted for me. And I'm not going to, you know, Tala. I, you know, I could have put Tala, but I also had a little connection with her. So the the obvious choice was to get, and also nobody wanted to get Gary out. Gary was the biggest biggest threat, and I want, you know, I put him up because I wanted to get him out, and everybody else agreed, and they got him out. So I don't know what I'm supposed to do differently. That's just that's the funny thing, Mertz, is when you know now you just get people, and we always talked about in the house of, of saying, hey, we're the only 15 people who can understand what's actually happening here. And relate to each other because uh, you always get people say oh man you should have done this I actually had a person who asked me said why did you vote why why did you vote for for Jillian you know what I mean? I'm like what are you talking about who am I gonna vote for Gary you know what I mean I'm in an alliance with Jillian uh, I vote I you know I nominated Gary to get out and he, he was already out so I wasn't obviously gonna vote for Gary so it's just funny what people say. was there was there any part of you was there any part of you that was bitter that Emmett and Jillian got you out that might have affected your jury vote for them it never would have affected my jury vote for them. No, uh, you know, I know it's a it's a competition you play you play to to win, and you know you got to get people out. As long as I thought that's why I'm out, I'm okay with that. Uh, I, I wish I could have made a couple of different moves. Like if I could have went back and changed anything, I wouldn't have had a final two with Jillian. I would have actually went all in with Emmett. I think that would yeah. be my my really only. Uh, opportunity to get into the final three and then if i did that then who knows what could happen then i could have then, then i could have potentially taken jillian with me if i won and then and then beat her hopefully yeah but then i understand why you didn't though because then you would have lost one of their jury votes whichever one didn't make it to the end yeah so whatever you know what i mean I, you can always look back now and say i should have done this but hey man i don't like i always like to say i don't have a 1985 uh, delorean <laughs> i want to uh I want to talk a little bit about. Uh, I, I know you had a pretty tight relationship with uh, with AJ. Um, when you got to the jury house, can you talk a little bit about the forgery jury alliance? Uh, did yeah. you know that that was happening? Did you know that they had coordinated their votes? Um, I did. I did know that because you know, obviously, I was just talking mostly with with AJ. As soon as I came back, you know, I mean, I was as soon as you get evicted, you're like, you know, you're like, oh man, no. You're upset, but then I'll, I was like, oh, you know what? Hey, I made it quite far. I'm quite happy with my game. You know, hey, damn you, Emmett and Jillian, but at the same time, I understand. Um, so going to the house, I was very happy to, to see AJ, and he was very happy to see me. Obviously, he wanted me to, to make it a bit longer. Um, but then I was just instantly, I think I kind of agree with, like Gary Gary said, you know, when you get in there and everybody's talking about it, you're just like zoned out. You're like, like I said earlier, I'm, I'm happy with the game that I played. It's over for me now, and now it's all about. Um, now it's all about just chilling and making my own decision, which I will make. You know what I mean? No one's going to change my mind and tell me something that that's going to make me uh, have a different opinion of wh- whoever the final two may be. So um, I think that it was all about Peter and Alec talking to, to AJ and, and just convincing him. Because obviously, like, look, I mean, AJ couldn't stand Gary in the game. You know what I mean? He wanted mm-hmm. him out from day one. And then all of a sudden, you know, he spends a yep. couple of weeks with him and then they're best friends. I mean... I think Gary slept a lot of the time. You know, they probably had a few smokes together and things like that. I mean, it, you know, Gary is a, Gary's a nice guy. AJ's a nice guy. Uh, and I guess if you're just up there and you don't know what's happening, you know, you, you just think the game is over for you, then you do have a, a bond, I guess, where you're just there for a week. I don't know. I wasn't there. I was there the last week when everybody was there. So then all of a sudden yeah. you get this connection. But then I think it's that, that plus all the stuff that, you know, all the manipulation that was brought from the Shield. And those guys obviously and manipulated AJ's brain and made him think something differently than what a real reality Big Brother fan would normally think in their vote. That's why it's so bizarre, like you said earlier on, the Shield and AJ, the third member of the Shield, the only guy who makes an alliance after the show is over, good move, uh, and the three of them decide to go completely against what, what any real Big Brother fan would believe. So... Yeah, and you say what you want with Jillian, but hey, she doesn't know the game and all this stuff, but she lied and she manipulated and she backstabbed and she won competitions as well. I mean, I know, I think Peter and all of their... Big, do you, okay. They, they love, who do they love? Do they love Janie, Janelle? Did she win a boatload of competitions? 
she didn't win. Yeah. Well, her. let me let me ask you this then. Let me ask you this. Let's say let's say Jillian had been evicted the week that Gary was, and Jillian got to yeah. spend a week with AJ. Would he have voted for her then? Probably, because she she would have turned. Yeah. Been all. She's a very sweet girl. You know, even if they don't. You, all of a sudden, you get in that scenario where she's the two of you. AJ's trust me. AJ. As much, as much as AJ says he doesn't like her, he thought she was gorgeous, for sure. He was like, hey, do they all look like her? Not only that, best? but in his, in, his insta- in his instant eviction interview, when Arissa asked him, like, who, who do you think yeah. is playing the best game? He was like, Jillian, Jillian, yeah. Jillian. So, exactly. like, I didn't think I had to, like, question his vote at all, I know. you know? I know. I think everybody was very, very surprised. And AJ is actually very, very lucky that Topaz made that mistake. Otherwise, he would have went down in history as the biggest dolt in Big Brother Canada history for his vote. You know, saying somebody made a mistake, and he would—I mean, how would he? He'd be—he'd be the one on the hot seat, sitting there going, "Ba ba da ba da ba I I I I. Like, why the hell did you vote for it? Why? 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 You know? And, and he'd be like, "Uh, because I like him," and be like, "You are a moron." Well, how come? Okay, okay. Well, you're you're bringing up a good point there because you had a tighter relationship with AJ. How come you couldn't sway him, and the Shield could? I I, I was done trying to sway anybody. I I just kept calling him a moron. <laughs> You know what I mean? I was mm-hmm. like, you know, because he just kept saying, hey, Gary's, you know what? And he, I, I couldn't sway him. I, I'm not a, I'm not a, the swaying type. You know what I mean? That's not, I'm a, not a manipulator. I'm a truth teller. So I would tell him, I said, I think you're an idiot. You know, I think those guys are idiots. They're bitter. Don't, don't do what they're doing. Uh, and, you know, I'm not, I'm not there to try and, to try and sway somebody. I'm there to, to make my own vote. And he's big and, big and ugly enough to make his own vote. And he did it. And he's just lucky that he hasn't had a, a tremendous amount of backlash uh, to come down on. You know what I mean? Like Topaz, obviously, didn't join up Twitter for quite some time. I think she was fearful of of what people may have said and all the haters out there. Um, you know, Jillian had a lot of haters as well, just because, I don't know, just because if, you, if you're a lover of the Shield, I guess you're a hater of Jillian and Emmett. But uh, AJ escaped somewhat unscathed, I think. And I feel bad for AJ, you know, much of the time because he was the first one in the jury house, and it sucks because then you're not on the show. You know what I mean? So, and I'm, I'm very, you know, I'm very fortunate that he was the one that went. You know what I mean? Was it unlucky or is it gameplay? Is it your better social game or have you got a better physical game and potential that people want to keep you? I can't speak to that. I just know that I'm, I, you know, Peter said I was lucky. Yeah, I had a couple of lucky things, but they're stupid as well to have to have keep, to have kept me. So they could, they got mm-hmm. the only people they should blame is themselves. But AJ, I don't know what the hell he was thinking about him. I really don't. Um, I want to I want to talk a little bit about uh, Big Brother 15 before we get into some questions. Uh, you said that you've watched the premiere. Yeah. Uh, does anyone sort of stand out to you? Do you have any sort of favorites at this point? I think um, I, I like the McRae kid. I mean, I think he's won he won eight to eight, and I think he's won the veto as well. He doesn't look like yeah. much much of mm-hmm. a beast. Um, I, I kind of like him. He seems kind of funny. Um, I don't know if this winning two competitions in a row is going to help. Um, you know. He doesn't seem like a like a target, and I think there's a couple of massive personalities in there that might be on the way out. I think David is probably going to be getting the boot pretty quick. Jeremy is, a, is just this loud, obnoxious guy. Um, reminds me a bit of Tom, maybe, <laughs> in that way. Yeah, yeah uh, I, I like, see a lot yeah. of Tom, yeah. I, I, like, uh, I like Howard, and I like Nick, I think. Um, just see, just I don't, person. I don't like Nick. I don't no. like Nick at all. I think that Nick is just going to overplay completely. Yeah. Well, when I first saw, when I first saw, the, um, you know, the, the, the interview he had with Jeff Schroeder, uh, yeah, he's, I was like, man, this guy reminds me of Peter or the, the, um, you know, whoever that type character, you know what I mean? He, or maybe Mike Boogie. But then when he was, he was standing up there next to McRae, you know, he held on for quite a long time. And, and also the other guys are just so over the top. I, I could see him maybe being able to slide in a bit. And I, I think he's, he's, he's part of this big male alliance that they might have, have aligned himself quite well. So I would say McRae and Nick working together might be uh, might do uh, some serious damage. But you know what? I'm, I'm going off of one episode, uh, a couple of reviews, and just a few tweets that I've seen. I'm not following the uh, live feeds or anything like that. So we'll see. I don't know. Depends on what they say. Um, the have you heard about it? <laughs> uh have you heard about all the like the the racial comments that were made yesterday what racial what did you say racial? um well apparently did you say yeah ra- well apparently uh <laughs> uh no 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 uh, racial as in okay, like uh yeah. black and white kind okay, of comments. no i didn't hear anything about that um Okay, well, I, I'm not I'm not going to repeat it because uh, I don't want this like played back and like cut like it's a Big Brother episode. But uh, suffice to say, after we finish this, uh, make sure you check out what Aaron said yesterday. It's oh, it's yeah. pretty it's pretty hardcore. Okay. 
I can only imagine. Um, <laughs> why yeah. do you think? Let, let's talk a little bit about showmances, Andrew. You know, there yeah. were showmances on Big Brother Canada. There's yeah. like showmances all over the place. Uh, if you had told me. Uh, two weeks ago that McRae was going to make out with Amanda, I would have said, what are you smoking? Because I want some. Did he, did he really? Yeah. What? Yeah, he did. Was there booze involved or what? Um, n no, apparently there was not. Uh, maybe there was. Maybe the chat room can tell me, but no. Um, apparently yeah. she likes uh, Gollum in Lord of the Rings. I don't know. <laughs> um, but No booze, says my friend. But... <laughs> Um, oh my god! So, tell me about the showmances. How frustrating was that? You know, you've got Topaz and Alec on your show. You've got Emmett and Jillian. Um, as somebody who's not in one, is that frustrating? Because certainly in the first episode, I thought you were being positioned yeah. as the poster boy for a showmance. Yeah, I know that. It's, it's funny when you watch it, and then when you actually see the reality of the show, is that there's nobody there for me. Obviously, I'm the I'm the oldest guy. You gotta how am I supposed to compete with with these young guys? So, you know, I mean, I never. I think they maybe played that up a bit that I wanted a showman. I didn't. I didn't want necessarily a showman to have one or not. I just wanted to to take whatever came my way. If it happened, it happened. And if it didn't, it didn't. For me, I was actually happy that it didn't because I wouldn't want to have that pressure. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was it was very very frustrating and but more just annoying um, because you're trying to have a conversation with people. You know, they they made it was, it was quite funny when obviously um, when. Tell and I had watched that 10 minute video every morning. I made fun of it, obviously, but it was a nightmare. I'd be sitting there across from the biggest, the worst for me was obviously Jamit, you know, Jillian and Emmett just sitting there. And you, you'd be having a conversation when they would just turn to the other one and just start kissing. And she'd be like, are you, like, Am I even here? I felt invisible. But uh, it, it's annoying. And, you know, it's, I've had so many people say, Why would you align with such a power couple and all that stuff? You know, it got me pretty far. Um, did I like watching them make out and talk all cuddly and hearing, you know, Jillian go, Emmett, Emmett? No, I don't like to hear that. Um, I see Emmett sitting there like this, which is his come yeah, here, come yeah. Jillian. Just, I haven't tried it down at the bars yet to see if it works. Um, it's it's annoying, but at the same time, they were my friends. Um, uh, believe me, I, I was many times they would just be groping each other, and I would say, you guys are a couple of assholes. I would call them out completely. Um they thought it was funny, probably annoyed at me at sometimes, and say, "Oh, you're jealous, sort of." And yeah, of course I was jealous. Many people have said that you're jealous of them. It's like, of course not. He played an amazing game. Uh, he, he's a great guy. He's 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 got many things going for him. And you know, how could you not be jealous of God's sake? People say it's only about, it's only about Jillian. It not, has nothing to do with that. Um, Jillian's a sweetheart as well, and she's my friend. But what can I say? You know, and I've got got my old buddy here, George, to say they really were. Uh, Jealous of Emmett. Yeah, I, I was for, for yeah. those reasons that I stated, but this guy, I think, is uh, a bit over the top. There he is. Yeah, this guy. <laughs> of course, man. What, what can you say? Were you? So, so you're saying, so you're saying, you, so if given if given uh, the chance to no, I'm not, sort of but, switch places. No, no, but I'm I'm saying I was jealous of, of his, the fact that he's 25 and he's he's so ripped and he also had such great, great gameplay. You know what I mean? Um Hey, he got the girl. That's great. I'm not jealous of the fact that he got Jillian at all. Uh, trust me. I'm very happy that they are with each other and that we were in a, in a great alliance and we are now very good friends. Um, I would, you know, how could you not be jealous of, of Emmett? Anybody out there? You know what I mean? <laughs> um, tell me, tell me about Jillian in the Evil Dead costume. Hey, she looked amazing. You know, I mean, Jillian's obviously a very attractive girl. <laughs> You know what I mean? It, it's uh, true. I mean, for God's sakes, she, she's she's very well put together. She's gorgeous. You know, she, she's going to make it on the show for many reasons, and it's obvious because she's very attractive and looks very good. So, um, that accentuated all of her uh, attributes. Let's just say. I have I've never wanted to be um, Emmett more than I did the day of the Evil Dead contest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. She looked, she looked good, for uh, sure. And that's, hey, that's why, I, obviously, I took her with me to the movie. And then so many people were like, man, why'd you take Tala? It's like, well, Tala and Jillian were in, in alliance with me. They're the two, the two, the two good-looking girls who are not on the block. And what am I going to do, take Peter and Alec? Or Peter and Emmett? No. Um, no, it's true. I, I don't understand why anyone would say that. I want to take some questions. We've got a lot of questions uh, coming in. First one is from Becca. 
Uh, before we do, everybody, a uh, quick reminder to please tweet that you are here watching the merch show with Andrew Monahan. Uh, you can follow him on Twitter at DrewManji74. Mm -hmm. uh, and we will be doing a merch challenge. It's an extra special merch challenge. Uh, you do not want to miss that. That's coming up in about five minutes. Okay, so first question from Becca. Andrew, what was your favorite memory of being in the BB Canada house? Yeah, Becca, I get, I get this question quite a bit. And it, it's hard to sort of just sort of pick one that was just the, the best. My favorite memory, though, has got to be when Pete came in. I mean, obviously, when my brother comes in the house, obviously, it was very difficult for me to get through that. But at the same time, knowing what, what a huge fan Pete is of Big Brother and the fact that he got to come into the house, that I don't think they've really ever done that in, in BBU. So for him to be able to come in the house, even though he's frozen and I'm unable to touch him, it was just amazing. And uh, th that for me was my favorite moment, definitely. Uh, from Alonzo, uh, what was going through your mind when the whole Topaz casting the wrong vote ordeal was going on? Hey, Alonzo. Um, you know, for me, I was just uh, seriously immersed sitting there going, thank God. I, 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 all of a sudden, actually, I, don't think my key, I think my key was the last one, so I was like this. Oh, crap. <laughs> Did I put in the right key? Because I knew that, obviously, you know, if people say, oh, did you really mean to vote for Jillian? It's like, oh, of course you didn't mean to vote for Jillian, you knucklehead. She wanted to vote for freaking Gary. So I was just like, oh, thank God that wasn't me. And I just felt really bad for her. I was very, very, I felt good for Jillian. And I was like, oh, you know what? Karma is a bitch. And hopefully it's going to work out all right. Because obviously a lot of people were thrown, thrown, um, or taken aback when, when um, AJ voted for Gary. So when you saw that, you were like, oh, my God, this is amazing. I think Jillian's got enough to win. Um, when we knew, I, I, I knew that Gary was going to win. And I told that to Emmett. He was kind of like, what the hell? Man, is going on? yeah, I mean, I did. I mean, I, w I was basically already putting my jacket on, you know, yeah. like when, when it was so, certain, when the vote reveal was happening. So, you know, and I was just really, really, I felt bad for Topaz. I didn't feel bad for Gary because um, Gary's going to do all right anyway. He's very, you know, he gets 20 grand. That's great for him. And really, he shouldn't have won. I mean, I voted for Jillian because I thought she should have won. And karma is a bitch. So I was just happy I wasn't in her shoes. Uh, I felt bad for her, but just very happy that I was able to do my one task, which was to make my statement and put in the right key. You know, you know, a lot of people aren't talking about Tala's vote. Um, was yeah. Tala's vote ever in question? Was the was the forgery trying to get her in on it too? Because oh, everybody yeah. talks about your vote, Emmett's vote, and Topaz's vote. Yeah. So nobody really talks a lot about Tala's vote. Was it ever in doubt? I don't think it was. Um, you know, I've heard Tala say a few times, and she's like, you know what, Gary almost may swayed me with his with his speech, which, I mean, you know, there's a lot of people who say that the speech cannot do anything, and obviously it didn't do anything in this case. Um, I think she just had a better bond with Jillian, um, and I don't think it was ever really in doubt. I think, Jill, you know, Jillian and, and uh, Tala had a good relationship. I think she maybe had a final two with a couple of them, but also I think the fact that uh, Tala and Gary did not you know, they might talk all see woodsy now, but and I don't think they talk that much, but I think they uh, didn't like each other initially, and there was times when they wanted to get each other out. You know, they had a few big scraps. Um, but they, I think it was, it was maybe similar to, to myself and Tala's relationship, but way more strained, I think. Tala and I really did have a good one. You know, we, we fought like an old married couple, but, but those guys, you know, I don't think they, they liked each other, but then didn't like each other as well, you know, because they were they were both trying to get a big – a lot of the spotlight, and I think that kind of rubbed each other the wrong way. Mm -hmm. uh, from Alonzo again, do you believe in the shield? Uh, no, I do not believe in the shield. Um, what, what can I say? What can I say? You know what I mean? Those guys, uh, I, I like them after the game. Do I like their game? Not particularly. They there was nothing really to like. They made all the wrong moves, and I feel I feel bad that yeah. You know, when you watch when you watch Alec on there, and he's in the jury house, and he's just grumpy. He's just like. Or when he comes out of the house, he's just like, I'm horrible. And same thing with Peter. He's just so negative when he gets booted, right? And you know, Arissa's like, hey, what do you think was your biggest mistake? He's like, everything. I didn't, I, I played incorrectly. And he just turns into this, like, robot zombie. Um, well, you know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, man, you, you know, I'm sure you got a lot of fans. A lot of people are going, man, you seem like a, a bit of a, a doofus right now. So they could have done a lot better. Um, I don't think they could have done it much better in game. But I think managing their kind of... Their exits might have helped them out. Um, you know, Peter's whole debacle there with sitting on the, on the stairs and that whole kerfuffle of a speech from from uh, um, was American Psycho. You know, what I mean, pandering. Um, 
it's not my style. You know, obviously Peter, Peter's got his own thing, but I was just like, man, why are you doing it that way? I mean, you know, and I, we looked at his character in, in the, in the, um, in the diary room for us, we never saw that. So when he breaks that stuff out, you're going, we don't understand. So really he should have maybe been more over the top when he left. I don't know. It was just, and that was over the top, but in a different way, just very, very like you're like, uh, you know, I'm going to, like as Tala says, I'm going to sleep with both eyes open if I'm ever in a room with that guy. Cause he seemed a little bit like, he's like, I, I've left something on the stove for you and it's your bunny. Uh, and you know, I'm just going to sleep with this, with this ice pick underneath my pillow. He just seemed a bit, uh, uh, yeah, crazy there at the end. And Alec was just sad. What's, uh, what's your relationship with them like now? It's fine. You know, I've, I've actually had a few texts off of here in the last couple of days, just asking me my opinion of the game and stuff like that about, uh, BBUS, page 15. Uh, Alec is obviously quite busy right now with, with school, but we've obviously tweeted and uh, texted back and forth as well. Obviously, when I go out there, um, I go out in spring to visit my brother Tom and his family. Then I'll, I'll meet up with those guys, at least go out for, for a bite to eat, a couple of jars, and maybe uh, play a little round of golf or something like that. You know, we've got we've, we've got connections. It's not like I'm just completely cut off. Uh, those guys are definitely my Big Brother Canada friends. We just have differing opinions on the game. Um, all right, now... I want to, I want to, I want to get to uh, a lot of these questions. So we're gonna have to really just like sort of fire these off, all right, Andrew? All right, I'll try my best. All right, here we go. Uh, so this is like rapid fire uh, from Mary. Uh, if you had to do Big Brother again, would you do it differently? Uh, only different thing I would do is would be to a really hardcore alliance with with Emmett at the end when we're hanging out all the time. Say final two, you and me all the way. Um. I've noticed that none of you ever follow any of your fans. Is there a reason why, especially your biggest fan? I'll let Andrew go first. I've got um, 16.2 thousand fans, so it's hard to follow them all. Uh, you get a lot of stuff in there. I, I apologize. Um, you know, I, how can I differentiate between who's my biggest fan? Uh, I've got a few big time fans. <laughs> well, so. also, you know, you gotta. I mean, if you're well, you got to keep your feed like you know clear yeah. to like the stuff you're interested in, right? Yeah. I mean, I think that that's a fair answer. Yeah. Um, let's see, from Sarah Green. Andrew, would you have gotten rid of Emmett and Jillian in the final five or four if given the chance? Great question. No, I, w I was, I was loyal, like, uh, like Mert said, I, would, I wanted to go to the final three with the two of them. Uh, all right. Uh, who would you have voted for if Jill and Emmett were both in the final two? Great question again. I, I probably, uh, you know, I probably, just because Jillian and I had a final two, I probably would have voted for Jillian, and knowing the fact that she wouldn't have got any votes from, you know, she would have basically got no other votes, so I would have thrown her a bowl. Yeah, uh, I think certainly Emmett, for sure. Um, let's see, who was the most underrated player in the game? Ah, that's a good one. Maybe me? <laughs> I, I I don't know. I mean, I think maybe me, besides that. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not going to say Tala, because Tala really wasn't a player. She just... You know, she didn't really do anything. She she was kept there for the, her ability not to do anything. Underrated? Uh, well, I'm obviously going to say AJ. I'm gonna, AJ. I'm, no, I disagree with that. I'm going to say most underrated, I'm going to say Jillian. I'm going to say Jillian because nobody gave her the credit. Wow. She was a big-time player, man. She won a lot of stuff made a lot of moves. Uh, so she And, you know, people say she's not a good player, but she's underrated. She's obviously a very good player. Uh, are you going to continue making YouTube videos? Uh, yeah, I think I will. I've got, you know, I've got a new website, drewmanji.com, which is linked to my YouTube page. So any kind of videos, probably going to do a few of those hangouts with my with my bro Pete for uh, BBUS and just any other musings that I might want to to wax philosophical about. Who knows? Maybe I'll make a a a, um, a music video. I don't know, pop music. Who knows? Um, were you a big uh, Jumanji fan? Is that where this nickname comes from? No, well, it, the nickname just comes from. I just wanted to give myself a nickname. That's pretty pathetic. But I've just, I just, I just heard of myself. I mean, Coolio, and I was just like, hmm, Jumanji. I was like, Jumanji. I think it drew. Hey, you know, Jumanji. I think that sounds pretty cool. So I just used that as my Twitter handle just for fun before I got into this, and I just kept it. So Jumanji. That's my. Uh, it's my new alter ego. It was an okay movie. All right, movie. well, uh, I believe it's that time. <laughs> it was an okay movie. I liked it. Um, I believe it's that time. Uh, so before I give you the merch challenge, I guess my final question is, who is your pick to win Big Brother 15? Uh, I am going to go with... 
man, you know, it's kind of a, I, I'm kind of a tossed up here. I, I think that the moves by McRae early on are probably going to come back to bite him. I think just the fact that he's won a couple already. Um, but I definitely, yep. I definitely like him. Um, but I'm going to go with either Howard or Nick. But I've also got, a, I think my dark horse might wow. be, might be Judd. Judd. J-U-W-D. Yeah. Party dirty. A, a lot of people, a lot of people are picking Judd. And like, I, I know Ian was all about Judd. And I yeah. can sort of, at first I was making fun of Ian going, what a terrible pick. But I, I sort of now see the brilliance of it. Well, I, so. I think he's kind of, you know, like, um, like with me, I think I was really back. Um, I um, think that he's kind of like me where, you know, he's not noticeable in the beginning. Totally. Maybe. Totally. All right. Andrew, are you ready for your merch challenge? Let's see what you got for me. Okay, so I thought long and hard about what I wanted to do for, for Andrew's challenge, and I was actually hoping that Pete was going to be here to assist me with this. Unfortunately, he's not. So no. what I want what, what I want to see is uh, I want you to pretend that your webcam is Pete when he entered the house and you had to do that Frozen challenge where the sumo wrestler and the cheerleaders oh, and all of them came out. So I, I, I want you to give me the same face you had when Pete came in, pretending that the webcam is Pete. All right. Ready? Okay, ready? One. I'll count you down. So one, two, three. <laughs> okay, okay. I think that's good. Did he pass the test there? I mean, I know we were missing the tears, right? I, I, if, uh, if but you can't really, guys can't really force. No, I could. I bet if you gave me a couple more minutes, I could get some tears out. But let's we'll save that for the next one. <laughs> no, we'll we'll save that for the next one. We'll save that for the next one. All right. So let's just uh, throw these on here. All right. Uh, if you want to follow Andrew and I, uh, it's at Mert Straffer at Drew Mangy seventy four. Uh, Andrew, thank you so much for joining me. Um, this was sort of a, w w with no offense here, Andrew. You know, you were the appetizer because uh, the AJ show is coming up. And let me tell you, it's going to be a barn burner. I think you should definitely call into that one. Maybe I will. Let me know when it is. Um, I, it's funny. It's funny how the first guy in the jury, the first guy in the jury, is going to be your your big show. Anyway, that's a whole other story. <laughs> it's okay. You can say it. You can say it. I mean, I, it's all leading. And so let me tell you that that AJ show is going to be an ode to AJ. Okay, oh. I'm going to finally reveal all the reasons why AJ was the best player on Big Brother Canada, all right? And I know everyone disagrees, <laughs> um, but I will make the case. All right, I will my make friend. The case. I, I may have to watch that then and watch you BS right. your way through an hour. It, it's going to be pretty good. <laughs> trust me, trust me, Andrew. This is like, it took me It took me a long time to yeah. come up with like 10 reasons why AJ is the best player on Big Brother Canada, but I've done it. Please let me know when that is because I do want to call in. I would love to have a, I'd love to have a Amazing. All right. Well, with that, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Andrew. I'd like to thank uh, Internet in Nova Scotia for finally allowing us to do this show. Oh, look, right when I say that is when he goes off the screen. <laughs> okay, wait, let's just wait to say bye if he comes back. Okay, there he is. He's back. Okay, so Nova Scotia Internet, thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Andrew, thanks for coming out. All right. Yep. Mertz, thanks, buddy. All the best. Happy Canada Day to everybody. Thank you, sir. I'm actually spending it with Liza at Canada's Wonderland tomorrow, so that should be interesting. Later on. Awkward. Peace. <laughs>